What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, this is episode number 19. And we start today's episode off with some player training, no not really, <laughs> we got bids here for uh, Leander, then Donker, our Belgian centre half, which we rejected from Brighton. And also going back to the subject of Rui Patricio, of course in the last episode you would have seen the bid coming for our Portuguese number 11 from Watford, 14.7 million now. I decided to reject it even though Patricio has been out of form this season, just because I wasn't sure on the realism of it. Now Watford right now are just above the relegation zone in 60. Place, I think they'll be safe in the Premier League for another season right now. As we had yet another bid for Dendonka, the amount of offers we've had this season actually, two here for Dendonka. The amount of offers we've had for Dendonka and Ferro and Bolly this season have been unbelievable. But yeah, I wasn't sure about the realism of selling Patricio to Watford there. I mean, I know he's been out of form this season, but he just signed a contract in the summer. He's 84 rated, and I know he's 33 years old, but if he was to leave, you'd think really he's probably going to go to a Europa League or Champions League standard team. So Instead, I decided to keep him here, and he's a fan's favourite and modern you as well, so for the realism's sake, I thought it was best to keep him here. Still for the first game of today's episode here, we'll take on Walsall FC in the fourth round of the FA Cup. And this being a bit of a West Midlands derby, and it's only around 10 miles separating the two clubs here. Taking on Walsall, the League 2 side, expecting this to be a walkover. My goodness gracious me, the booze at halftime told the story in the first 45 minutes. We conceded very early on through Holden as the League 2 side stunned us and led at the break with 45 minutes to go. The board have asked us to win this competition going out in the fourth round to League 2 local rivals Walsall that would be not the end of my position as, as Wolves manager but would certainly raise a lot of eyebrows so in the second half I thought sod this man I've been way too passive in the first half let's get us back in the game three minutes after the restart we find our leveler with the first goal of the game for us Semedo crossing from the right hand side and Andre Silva how good has this guy been this year as a backup for Al Jimenez gives us the leveler and puts us back on level terms only oh, nine minutes to go. Still tied at 1 1. Gives White plays a great ball through to a downward Traore. One all Jack Crows. It's a fabulous save by Walsall's goalkeeper, but Jimenez off the bench, keeps the chance alive, doesn't, doesn't just settle for the corner, nods it back into open play, and who's there to turn in the rebound? Andre Silva once again, and I'll say this right now for our new signings this year. Raf has been decent on the left hand side. Barkley's given us solid minutes as well, and we like Ike Nuri as the backup left back. But let's be honest here signing of the season by a country mile. Andre Silva single handedly turns the game on its head and wins it for us. And talk about blushes spared as well, man. Seriously, League Two Walsall leading at the break with their only shot on target. Had we lost this game or even needed a replay, that would have been pretty embarrassing indeed but Andre Silva turns out to be the hero in that one as we just about escaped man that was very very lucky indeed to make it through to the fifth round but it's still falling out some more bids coming in and once again like I talked about earlier the bids we've had this year for Willy Bolly, Faro and Dendonka as well are unbelievable and I'm just going to say this is realistic you know because we had the best defensive record in the division last year or the second best defensive record in the division the clubs know how good we were defensively last year and therefore they're looking to snap up our center halves. That's what I'm going with. It's probably just random and coincidental, but that's what I'm going with. And so for the second game, this episode here, take on the bees, Brentford away from home in London, aim to get back to winning ways in the Premier League on the back of our draw against Newcastle United very recently here. Uh, taking on the bees, obviously right now, a newly promoted side sat in the relegation zone, feeling very confident indeed. First chance falling to us with Rafa hitting the post, but 25 minutes in, Renato Sanchez with a lovely through ball, rolls through Raul Jimenez, and whilst Andre Silva has been fantastic this year. This guy's been our player of the year once again. Jimenez with yet another goal. He has slowed down a little bit in his rate of goals per game, but he's still our top scorer and the league's top scorer as he gives us the lead connecting with Renato Sanchez. So 1-0 towards Brentford. Almost found their leveler before the break, but in the second half, there was nothing really to report. All the chances came in the first half, really. And whilst it was kind of surprising with us being the third highest scorers in the division and Brentford having the worst defensive record in the division in the end, 
and a 1-0 scoreline is all we needed as we return to winning ways in the Premier League and close out January back in the top four as well. It is really, really difficult to get away from Arsenal and Spurs right now as we have yet another bid for one of our centre-halves into Milan coming sniffing for Ferro, but we say no. Then yet another one comes in for him along with another one for Den Donker as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is a coincidence. This is, this is realism. This is realism here. But yeah, we reject these bids here and accept one for Asmussen. Yeah, right now, as you'll see the lead table in just a moment's time, we just, we can't get away from Arsenal and Spurs, man. They're continuously breathing down our necks and we just cannot cement a top four place no matter what type of form we go into during the season. It's so, so frustrating. But uh, regardless, following a the win there, it was time for transfer deadline day and other than the bids we had for Ferro and Dendonka and Rasmussen's uh, deal uh, falling through with the transfer talks breaking down, we didn't do anything on January transfer windows deadline day just like last year because I thought to myself why do I need to right now you know we're into the fifth round of the FA Cup we're into the round of 32 in the Europa League or of course we're taking on Spartak Moscow and we're currently sitting in the top four in the Premier League as things stand we're on course to do exactly what we plan to do at the start of the season you see the top bids here Robertson leaving Silva leaving and Rodri also going alongside Bernardo Silva to Bayern Munich from Manchester City there as Andy goes to Real Madrid but yeah I didn't feel the need to make major changes you know right now again we're in a top four third best scoring record in the division that is nothing like last season we've turned our biggest weakness into a strength we've got the third best defensive record a joint third best defensive record in the division as well right now we're fine like we're totally totally fine so no need to make major changes I like the teams it is I've left the money in there for the new season and um, yeah I think I've called it right there but so uh, regardless you know schedule there for uh, February including both legs against Spartak Moscow in the Europa League and our draw for the fifth round of the FA Cup once again a West Midlands derby against the championship side well now championship side West Bromwich Albion they're currently sitting in an automatic promotion place at this point in the game. But I do feel very confident indeed uh, heading into that FA Cup fifth round tie there. And again, you know, this season the board have said they want us to win both the FA Cup and the Europa League. I really don't think we can do both. I think that's going to be incredibly tough indeed. But one of the two will satisfy me. And I feel confident we'll be able to deliver one of those trophies come the end of the season. And so for our third and final game of today's episode, they're taking on Liverpool right now. Going for the Premier League title. Of course, they had it a couple of years ago. Man City won it in the first season is safe. Now they're trying to reclaim it from Guardiola's side. Both teams needing a win for different reasons here. And it was Raul Jimenez who gave us the lead in this one. Heading in that corner to give us the early advantage as we led by one and as Liverpool tried to respond from going down a goal early in the game had a couple of great chances here in the 30 and 35th minute marks first Thiago firing that shot wide and as Mo Salah turns Johnny inside out Firmino finds a bit of space but Patricia makes a good stop at his near post to keep us leading by a goal heading in to the break and in the second half still leading by a goal to nil Liverpool were dominating possession in this game and you would have noticed it this season as well in this year's career mode it seems like the AI is so accurate with their passing and they play at a really slow tempo as well so in the majority of my games I'm always losing the possession battle I just could barely get the ball off them in this game I tried to intercept there the ball ricocheting right back to Liverpool as we were still leading by a goal as Firmino gets around his man with a couple of nice bits of dribbling Sabitza tries his luck from close range but again it's Rui Patricio making the save so it's still leading by one but not due to the fact we were looking in control instead we were just soaking up pressure and Patricio was bailing us out on multiple occasions Eight minutes to go. Once again, Marcel Savitzer at the heart of things. Navi Keita gives him the ball. Lovely through to Vino. But again, it's Rui Patricio having his best game of the season. Talk about a redemption arc from our Portuguese number 11. Another amazing save as we still led by one. And with three minutes to go, holding on to the one goal lead. Oh, it just had to happen, didn't it? So close to clinging on to a massive victory and a massive three points and a massive redemption moment for Rui Patricio. Marcel Sabitza fires in a leveller as Liverpool find themselves the equaliser with just a couple of minutes of normal time on the clock. So frustrating. A draw is actually a really good result, but it's the way we lost the two points right towards the end of the game there. And, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. And I know I sound like...
like a broken record, but I just honestly believe this. I really feel like EA have scripted it this year, that late goals are just unbelievably common and at times almost unavoidable. It just seems to happen all the time. You know, we got one against Walsall at the start of the episode there. Liverpool finding one there against us there. It seems like every two or three games in this season, we see a goal occurring or maybe even two goals occurring in the final five minutes. It just seems so, so common. So I wasn't really surprised, even though it was very frustrating indeed. 1-1 the final score. Once again, we drop out of the top four, man. I don't know whether we are going to get a Champions League qualification for next year because unfortunately, we just cannot pull ourselves away from Arsenal and Spurs. So that was this episode of the Realistic Career Mode, guys. So big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I will see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode featuring both legs of our Europa League Round 32 tie against Spartak Moscow in the FA Cup fifth round as well. Very soon. <laughs>